back home. But I might be leaving in a few hours. <laughs> I think I've been home for two days. Got a whole pile of stuff done here. And uh, there's actually sunshine outside. It's crazy. But anyway, uh, what do I got to share here? Bunch of stuff. A few mentions of other various. Um, all right, I got a, I got some notes written down here. I want to touch up on um, Edgar, Edgar's wife, Karen, uh, got a hold of me, and unfortunately, uh, she said I basically guessed right that his cancer has come back and has given him a rough go. Uh, it was a handful of days ago, three or four days ago, she emailed me, and uh, it's unfortunate. So there you go. Um, I'm sure you'll all be sending him well wishes, and I did on everybody's behalf, and uh, hopefully he, he gets through this and wins. Um, related to Edgar, what he shared with us and who he shared with us, I do have the contacts of his colleagues who do have the uh, substantial information that they agreed to share with us, I'm sure they still will. but. Uh, I would prefer to focus on Edgar's battle right now and how he's doing and hopefully gets through it, importantly. And um, we'll see how, where that goes. So that's a quick update on that. Um, what else? Why sounds don't matter to me. So for anybody who may have missed it in the past, uh, I... I have been going to these remote places that I go to and share with you guys since I was in my teens, right? And what I do, I am not looking for so-called proof what a small minority of the people out here believe they need proof. I've said in the past, if you think that you still need proof of some of the uh, bizarre things, the realities are going on in this world, this isn't the channel for you. Because if what has been offered up from thousands of people, that is proof. If I hadn't seen these things firsthand myself, I have a rational, independent thinking mind. That's proof for me. I would have to be an, I would have to be an, an absolute dumbass to ignore the testimonies of tens of thousands of people globally whose testimonies are so similar it's absolutely ridiculous and nobody's connected you would have to be very very mentally challenged to not accept that that proof so anyway uh this channel isn't about proving anything to anyone this channel is for the people who are who are uh, quite a few notches above that that stage of the game all right There's plenty of other channels that are out trying to seek proof you go seek those out and follow them um, what else? One, I, I have sh also made it clear previously that I will continue to share all these beautiful places myself with whoever may be there as well. I will not be bullied or scared out of going to these places ever in this lifetime. I do not fear death. Um, just to make it clear, I'm not seeking out, like I said, I'm not seeking out proof. But I did make it up, I've made it clear various times, though, while I am sharing people's voices, while I am videotaping my adventures, um, if something happens, I'm going to share it with you guys. If I, if I capture something odd, um, maybe possibly something, a, a video capture or an audio capture, I'm going to share it with you guys. And I'm not going to say what it is, if I don't know what the hell it is, but if it sounds like something I've never heard before, I'm going to tell you guys, hey, listen to this. It doesn't sound like anything I've ever heard before. I don't know what the hell it is. I'm going to share it with you. That's what I've been doing. Um, I was notified there's a handful of people blowing a gasket because this guy who claims to not give a shit is, is going out of his way to share sounds and videos and shit, and they are just the, uh, those are the misinformed people who have stumbled across this channel. Um, yeah, heard that knock in the forest the other day. I didn't even know what it was. The fight, because my hearing's quite challenged with some tones because I almost had my head blown off twice now with high powered rifles less than a foot from my head. So I have a ringing right now that I can hear crystal clear right now. And it can, it can make sounds challenging for me to pick up on. So when I'm focused reading, that's another thing too, for years, 
while I'm focused reading, um, I've had tons of people will talk to me and I don't hear them. It's a weird thing. I just don't hear. So when I catch something, but I am more, a little more aware when I'm by myself in the woods and when I do hear a sound like I heard in the, off to the left in the timber, that turns out it was some kind of a knocker or whatever, a thump. I didn't know what it was when I heard it. Not until I was editing the video and then I caught it again watching the, the video. I'm like, oh, what was that? And I replayed it back and forth. I thought, holy shit, listen to that. And then I cranked up the volume and, and copied it and pasted it in there a couple more times for you guys to hear what I heard. But I didn't know I, that's what I heard at the time. It's kind of funny. And then that animal sound over by the island there, still don't know what the hell that was. I've heard millions of seals, millions of sea lions, otters, raccoons. That was none of the above. And no, there are no foxes on Vancouver Island. There's no coyotes on Vancouver Island. And I did hit the beach next to that island. There wasn't any tracks on it. There's a bear there. They taped him. There is wolves in Vancouver Island, but there's none right there at the time. Maybe sometime in the past, but not right now and not then. So do I know what that sound was? Nope. It was one hell of a creepy sound. That's all I can say. That's all I did say. Take from what you will or leave it. That's it. Bear hunting. A handful of people are going to be curious why I bear hunt. Um, once again, I 100% do not feel I need to explain myself for hunting ever. And I don't. Um, bear hunting. Um, I used to be right into it. Um, I've always myself, when it comes to my personal hunting, I've always myself have have, I enjoy the hunt, I enjoy being out there. The killing, the actual act of killing something isn't that exciting at all. And that is usually only a two or three second part. Two or three second part of the whole big picture. It's a natural activity, it's a healthy activity. I am a natural hunter, I came across it naturally. Nobody in my family hunted and I have been that with hunters since I was like 11. And what I started doing when I started my own personal hunting was I would I found a huge old buck told everybody about him no you believe me and then uh, it took me a while but I eventually managed to get that one deer with my bow and I and that has been the theme of my hunting ever since I do I eat everything that I harvest I utilize everything that I harvest and all the non-edible parts you can see them right here behind me and it's all memory is what what that is but it's also utilizing the parts that normally just get thrown on the ground and chucked anyways i'm babbling a little bit here but getting back to the bear hunting so the original bear that i did buy a bear tag for to go after because he was basically going to get killed and chucked in the dump where they do them i thought well the hell would i'll get my bow and i'll harvest him myself and that was my original intent but along that route it triggered it triggered that excitement in me again. I got excited again. I got into the hunt and now I got the Zodiac and I can go to all these little nooks and crannies and remote little places with it, beach it, go and explore. And that's what I've been doing and it really was exciting for me. And I ended up videotaping, I think, 30 bears. And there is one larger bear, a big bear. There's also a problem bear in town. Well, not really town, it's remote. And uh, we'll see. We'll see if how much of a problem he becomes. And if he is going, if it's inevitable he's going to get dusted, then maybe I'll harvest him with my bow and make sure he gets utilized. Um, aside from that, there is a monstrous, monstrous old pastures pine black bear, black, black bear that I videotaped, no, I photographed two springs ago. Just an enormous, absolute mind-boggling hog. And um, I did start looking for him. And that's, again, me getting my natural hunter in me triggered, the excitement revived and I was into it. Uh, what else can I share? Quick note before I share some voices. Uh, a lot of people think I'm crazy for going by myself. Why do you go by yourself? Why aren't you packing a bazooka? Um, I'm on Vancouver Island. I grew up in Vancouver Island. I cut my teeth hunting in Vancouver Island, always alone. And when it comes to my own personal hunting, um, I prefer to be on my own. I find that I possibly see more, 10 times more when I'm alone. And also what I, what I do like when I'm alone, I don't miss much when I'm alone. I'm very aware there's nothing, nobody there distracting me, making noises, um, screwing me up. And there's nobody as well, there's nobody there wanting to quit and go home. And um, it's just far more productive, it's more relaxing. And I, and I very rarely miss much when I'm alone in the, in the wilds. I love it, I'm comfortable with it. It's my no bullshit place and it's also why 
I spent so much time in the no bullshit zone, why that bullshit stands out so clear to me when it comes to this topic, with the majority of the people included with this topic, and many more topics. I see the bullshit clearly because I live in the bullshit free zone. <clears throat> what else? What else can I touch on quickly that I'll probably forget to touch on later? Or maybe I'll remember I didn't touch on it later. Uh, yeah, so when it comes to me and hunting by myself, being alone in the woods, I know where I am. I know what's running around me. I know there is an extremely high quality, abundant food source for the predators where I am. The chances of any predator wanting to take down a human are real slim. Uh, the chances of bumping into a rutting, big, male, aggressive black bear, they're fairly high. I can handle that. I can deal with that, no problem. And uh, I'm not scared. So, when I'm on the mainland though, it's a different story. You got grizzly bears running around everywhere. You got black, huge black bears, there's wolves, there's wolverine. There's an abundance of various different predators, big cats. There's also big cats in the island, but again, there's a big, there's a long, it's a big food source, abundant food source for the cats as well. But I'm aware, I'm aware of tracks. Every time I, I, I see soft ground, I'm looking for tracks and sign non-stop. I go with my intuition, my sixth sense, which I am in tune. And um, I'm very, very comfortable and very confident while I'm out there, all right? Uh, but again, yeah, the mainland, that's when I'm gonna have the magnum with me. Good, because I know the chances of something odd possibly happening where I need a real good equalizer is more likely on mainland British Columbia than it is in Vancouver Island, all right? So yeah, I'm confident with my bow. And, um, and that's that, I'm getting on with it. Babble. We've got to get to hear some voices. Again, if you're on this channel, you came uninvited, and you are very welcome here, and take what you will or leave it when it comes to what people share here, and if you're here to blow a gasket and I find you, I'm just going to block you and delete you for life anyway. So that was the share there. Now, here is an interesting email that I caught a few days ago while I was on the boat. And this is, remember the person that mentioned the disappearing trackway noted from the helicopter? And I asked the person to uh, hopefully get in contact with whoever's in the helicopter, maybe share their photographs or whatever. And we got a reply, and I haven't read it yet. This is titled, Disappearing Trackway Spotted from Helicopter. Hi Steve, you read my little piece from a screenshot in the comments about the Washington State Forester spotting a trackway from a helicopter. From the comment screenshot, that's great. That's great that, you, that you're still here and you saw that. I wrote and posted the below as a short follow-up. That's in my stories I sent you. In captures one through six, a UFO sent April 7, 2022. I think it's probably one you keep calling a book. Oh God, you know what? I wouldn't say that because there are a lot of books in, in my inbox here, and I mean frickin' books. You said send it all, so I sent half, maybe sometime, stuff that might help some folks. No problem, I will get to it. That was a long time ago, 26 years ago. This Washington State DNR forester told me about the disappearing tracks. Wow, 26 years ago. Tracks disappearing up in the middle of a glacier, away from trees, was noted. He was nearing retirement then. I think he said he was going to Sasquatch conventions back then. He was really into it and made no secret about it. He had a very interesting sideline occupation. Catching and milking rattlesnakes for serious dollars. No shit. So if he's reading this, he'll know. I'd love to speak with him again sometime too. Yeah, wouldn't we all? If you are still upright on the face of this planet, then you know who we're talking about, get a hold of me. All right? Especially if you got pictures of those tracks disappearing. A recently deceased friend of mine of almost 40 years was the natural resources investigator in the 90s. The warden, woods cop, a pine pig deluxe, lol. A pine pig deluxe, lol. Oh god. For Washington, Northwest Region, DNR, and his boss was the regional forest protection forester at the time. We were at a birthday party around 2000 with the families. My buddy and me were talking about Sasquatch, and his mother-in-law overheard and asked if he believed in it. My friend, and, my friend and his boss right away started telling us about being screamed at and having the pudding scared out of them as they ran back to the truck six months before in the Sultan Basin, Washington. 
The forester's wife responds is funny. I'm amazed, I'm surprised that it is so unlike this guy I've been married to for 25 years, she asked him. You really believe in it? He was like, oh yeah. She said, she always thought they existed but never asked him because she didn't want another agree to disagree agreement. If he thought they were real, there was no doubt in her mind they were out there. The summer of 95, I worked as an engineering intern for Washington DNR. One of the senior field foresters I got to work with that summer was tuned into the wild ones. He told me of spotting a trackway from a helicopter. It went several hundred yards across a glacier above Darrington, Washington. Oh, this is, the, this is what you, you commented. The boulder-strewn snow field was overshadowed by a cliff-faced ridge that was riddled with caves. He said they sat the helicopter down, took pictures, and measured the tracks. He said the tracks were real fresh, 20 inches long, and an amazing six to seven feet apart. The strange part was that the tracks stopped and disappeared in the middle of the glacier. I remember thinking that that was really up and strange and it spooked me. Because I hero worship this guy, I was already a convinced knower. I was just inexperienced and didn't understand when things go sideways and get strange. There we go. Absolutely appreciate your time, Glenn. I'm glad you're still with us watching the channel and you went out of your way to share that email. I gotta get rid of this chicken. Are you kidding me? All right. <laughs> There's a couple of hens that feel they need to clock their brains out and come in here all the time and just non-stop clucking. I don't get it. Okay, oh, here's one. This is some crazy random timing. Somebody has a friend. And somebody has notified us that Linda Feather's birthday is June 7th. Is it the 7th today? It's the seventh. How random is that that I actually got to read this on the right day? Crazy. Apparently, Linda Feather, you listen to this channel all the time. And uh, let's all hope together that, Linda, you have a great day and a great birthday. <laughs> Crazy. No, please don't, you guys don't slam me with 10,000 birthdays to read her, right? Very random. We got her done. We got you, Linda. Happy birthday. I'm trying not to be in a rush, but if I get most of my stuff done here early enough, I can go back out to the coast today. Not today, first thing in the morning. All right, here we go. Uh, let's listen to this one. Barry Allen Ferguson, the Beaver Clans of the Alaska Highway. All right, here we go. From Fort Nelson, BC, down to my Beaver Indian Clan, from the Fairview, Hintz Creek, and Clear Hills areas. Doig River First Nations is just north of us, and we have family there too. Our medicine men and women are called dream walkers. Yeah, as you probably know, I am absolutely familiar with all that territory myself. This is where we are shown medicine from the Mother Earth and ways of helping our clans. I have this gift, and after my 1996 encounter with the twin Sasquatches and their mother, this was how they were contacting me in my dream state. I thought I was losing my effing mind. The twins shown me when they were small enough how they would travel from tree to tree, but when they got to the big, they couldn't do it anymore. But when they got too big, they couldn't do it anymore. Steve, my brother. Steve, my brother, I was on your last video before they put you in YouTube jail and they cut my story in half. Oh, no shit. They just posted the ending of the story where the female Sasquatch kept on trying to trick me. I put a end to it and won't allow them in no effing more. I'm a dream walker. It happened to me from years, it happened to me from years of torture. What happened to me in 2016 trapping my uncle Bobby. I had a, I had an old timber wolf hunt me around our camp. I had eight trap lines within a 15 kilometer radius around a campsite. This is where I was getting multiple tree knocks every time I was outside. I will say this, how do they know four years prior to 2016 trapping on a trap line, 50 kilometers from the first sighting in 96, west of the Keg River. How did they know I would be there and how did they know a wolf would be hunting me there? This was what they showed me four years prior to 2016 and they also showed me they were protecting me. As far as I'm concerned, their race and ours are connected through the great creator and the angels. They showed me compassion. I am forever grateful for my experience. 
May peace be with you all. Amen. Barry Allen Ferguson. Well, that's interesting, Barry. Fairly short and straight to the point. Appreciate your time, man. And uh, if you want to, if you feel compelled to, one day, email us with a little more detail on all the knowledge you have. I'm interested in hearing it. I'm sure there's a whole pile of people listening right now that feel the same way too. All right? Email me back with a lot more knowledge. I shouldn't say a lot more knowledge. Email me back with whatever knowledge you're willing to share with the people that may help them. Okay? And you'd be safe out there. You'd be safe out there too. All right. NH Police Officer Reporting. I'm guessing that's New Hampshire. Hi, Steve. Let me first off start off by saying I love your channel, not only because of your coverage of the topic, because also your very open mind, feelings for the people, and your no nonsense approach to life in general. Keep up the good work. I, for one, support you. Thank you so much for those supportive, kind words. I'm a retired police officer detective. I worked in three police departments across the USA for 35 years. You may use my name, which is Rick Stazen. I did send you this story over a year ago, but I've not seen you share it. Perhaps I missed it. Anyways, let me retell it for you. I grew up in southern New Hampshire. I began my police career in January of 85, working for the Amherst NH Police Department. Having gone to the NH State Police Academy in 85, I was eager to be out on the road responding to calls and doing my best to help out. Now, southern NH is mostly a rural area with spread out homes. Amherst is very much the same. My sighting occurred in the summer of 86 at the junction of Route 101 and Holy Hill Road. New Hampshire in the 1980s had very little crime, mostly burglaries, thefts, and drunk driving. So we were always on the lookout for more serious criminals. So we were always on the lookout for the more serious criminals. While I was driving my police vehicle in full uniform, and as I approached the intersection, I observed a man-like creature covered in brown to black hair walk across Holy Hill Road. I would estimate he was about six feet tall. Now, it's not illegal to walk in a costume in New Hampshire. However, there have been recent burglaries in the area and what would be a good disguise? So, I turned on the blue light, pulled right at the place of crossing and yelled at him to stop. He did not and disappeared into the adjacent woods. Well, the woods in summer in New Hampshire are very thick and it's simply not possible to walk through them so fast. I got out, walked to the spot, but he was gone. I then realized this could not have been a man. It was a Bigfoot. Growing up, I was always interested in things like Bigfoot, UFOs, and other strange things. I love the outdoors, but I'm not a hunter nor a fisherman. I do take every chance I can to go walking, hiking through the woods, to lakes or ponds, and go swimming and skiing as lot and enjoy this very much. Do this skiing a lot, sorry. A little typo there. But this, inter but this intersection to the northwest side is a small dairy farm. I'd recently taken a report of six missing cows and investigated it as best as possible. However, came up with no leads. To the east side is a heavily wooded area with a small lake and grasslands. Numerous animals abound. Realizing I saw a Bigfoot, I rushed back to the station to tell everyone what I saw. The police chief was a retired U.S. Air Force Master Sergeant. He looked at me with his mouth wide open and didn't say a word. The reaction from the other officers was similar. The town gossip, the janitor, happened to be in the station at the time and listened to me closely. He told me what he told me. What I saw must have been a full-sized turkey. <laughs> Looking at the reaction of others, I thought it best to say, really, they get that big and move so fast. Oh yes, he replied. I said, wow, I've never seen one before. That must have been it. The other officers then smiled and all returned to normal and I left thinking, wow, these guys are all brainwashed. It was not a turkey. I know what I saw. Working a few years later in Aluchua, Alachua or Alucha, Chua County, Sheriff's Office in Florida, I've had the feeling of danger and fear at many places at rural spots in the county. I'm well aware of my developed sixth sense and I always trust it. Over the years, it has proven invaluable in my line of work. 
Well, that's it, Steve. Please feel free to share this. I hope it may help out others. Keep up your good work. We need more like you. Sincerely, Rick. How do I? I got to pronounce that correctly. Rick Stazen. Rick, appreciate you, man. I appreciate the time of your life you spent to helping people. Appreciate your time you just you just spent to share that with all of the people here through me. We both know time is valuable, right? And uh, that'd be interesting to know if you how many people you came across that you could share a conversation with when it came to this topic since then. Um, excuse me, I have a feeling it's probably many, right? Yeah, crazy. You know, I'm gonna say one more thing I forgot to mention earlier clearly was about me going in the middle of nowhere um, and not being afraid. I, I do not fear death. Um, I, you, we all have the equal right to be in this lifetime anywhere we want as long as you're not infringing on somebody's private property right or, or a business or, or doing something illegal when it comes to the real world the no bullshit zone we're all equal we are all equal period and um, I will continue to share the real world with whatever whoever lives there until I can't walk anymore it's just all there is to it so um, I think that is possibly has something to do with why I go to these places no matter what, right? I go to these places no matter what because I can and, and I am just as equal and just as deserving and so are you to go to these places. That's all there is to it. All right, anyway, before I go on a tangent, <laughs> let me get back to sharing some voices, which is way more important than my voice. Where's Red? Shares changed my mind is the title of this one. Hello, Steve. I guess I need to start with an apology. I was one of those guys that would laugh at Sasquatch stories and I would think that their imagination just got away from them. I guess I'll start by telling you why I had this opinion. I'm 51 years old now, so, the, so these dates won't be perfect, but close by the way. This is all taking place in Southwest Missouri, the Ozarks for reference. It started in kindergarten around 76, 77, riding the school bus. All my friends were talking about the Six Million Dollar Man episode that aired the night before. It had Bigfoot fighting Steve Austin. It was awesome in the eyes of us six-year-olds. Yeah, it scared the shit out of me. I remember it. One of my friends said Bigfoot is real because his uncle saw one. Wow. So I go home and tell my parents that a kid's uncle saw one. Quickly they correct me and imply someone's lying to me. So this set in motion my opinion on Sasquatch stories. Now a little about me to understand my mentality. I think I'm a lot like you, Steve. That's all I can think of to write without coming across like some wannabe tough guy. A trait I hate, by the way. Let's just say I'm different than most. I just always thought I was the toughest, even as a child. Writing, this is a 51-year-old, obviously I knew I wasn't. But in my heart back then, I really was. Oh, well. I was just different than all my cousins and friends that were scared of the dark, just mentally wired than most. Just mentally wired different than most. I tell you all of that so you can laugh at me and these stories I'm about to tell. Of course the lawnmower is flashed up in the next farm over, right? Hopefully it's not too loud. First story, this is around 7980. I'm at my parents' forest. I'm in my parents' forest with my neighbor boy that is the same grade age around 9 to 10 and his little sister, a couple years younger. We just pilfered through our neighbor's dump finding all kinds of treasure for 10 year old boys to play with. He found an old wooden baseball bat. Meanwhile, we keep hearing what sounded like hammering around maybe half a mile away in the woods. Wondering what someone was building, a house or possibly a tree stand in the forest to the north. It would be maybe five strikes then stop. Then, maybe four, then stop, like someone driving nails. We talked about sneaking up on them to see. Finally, my friend started matching the number of however many strikes they did. He mocked them on a tree with the bat. This went on for just a few times, maybe two or three. Now remember, this sounded at least a half a mile away. Pretty soon the hammering sounded at less than a hundred yards away. That was the first time I ever felt fear in my chest. I looked at my friends, and they have a terrified look on their faces. 
I played tough nuts and asked them if they wanted to go see who was doing it. I knew the answer before I asked, and I was sure glad when they both wanted to get out of the woods and head back towards home, because that is exactly what I was going to do. Story two, fast forward a couple years, I'm around 12 years old. The neighbors from previous story moved away, so I buddied up to another neighbor boy that was three grades older than me. We became close friends in the past couple years. He was older, cool, and treated me like gold. We had a blast, whatever we was doing. Whether he was playing basketball or throwing cow turds at each other. Anyway, one day he said, you want to go back to the waterfall? What waterfall, I say? He said, there's a waterfall in those north woods. I'd been in those woods many times, but I'd never seen a waterfall. So, absolutely, let's go. He leads me to it, and it was awesome in my eyes. Now, this isn't some huge Canadian waterfall. It was a stream that fell about three feet. Still, it was a special place to me. One of my favorite places, actually. We hung out there many times. Absolutely beautiful. Well, as boys get older and their other friends start driving and come pick them up, or they start going out with girls, they no longer want to hang out with a 12-year-old neighbor that is three grades younger. So I was lonely, depressed, and a little sentimental, and thought I would walk the mile or so back to the waterfall while, re while reminiscing of some of the best times of my life. At that time, I had a German Shepherd mix that never left my side. He was fearless and protective of me. Many stories to back up this claim I won't even get into. Well, we got to the tree line, and he doesn't come with me. I call him into woods, and he comes, but goes back out into the field. Very strange. Yeah, especially for a German Shepherd. I thought, I, very strange I thought, but maybe we heard, he heard my mom hitting a pen while feeding him table scraps. That is the only thing that would draw him away from me. Oh well, he heads to the house and I head to the waterfall. See, that's really weird for German Shepherd. I felt a sense of dread going through the woods, like I was being watched. I couldn't explain it. I felt like such a coward and I wouldn't let myself chicken out. There wasn't anything to be scared of, so I keep going, but the dread is crushing me. I refuse to be chicken and press on until I get to the waterfall. I feel eyes upon me. I know the direction it's coming from. I had very strong intuition as a child, almost psychic level stuff. Not so much anymore, unfortunately, but as a kid, I was pure, and I think that has something to do with it. Yeah, every one of us. But anyway, I'm there. But to go down into the creek where the waterfall is, you have to give up the high ground, which I was too scared to do, to be honest. So I'm standing there feeling pressure from my right, with waterfall to my left, and I can't get enough nerve to walk down the grade to sit on the big rocks, trying to figure out who was there and this sense of fear out of the blue. Remember, I don't believe in Sabbath. I honestly never crossed my mind that something wasn't right. About, about that time, a pebble hit the leaves beside me. I told myself that was an acorn. Then again, another one, same spot, a foot or two away from me. Again, I tell myself it was an acorn. I'm too scared to look right. So I keep looking towards the creek. Again, a pebble hits me in the same spot, but this time I see it. It bounces. It is a round pebble, peachy light, orangey in color. So I think for a second maybe my friend is messing with me. So I scan the forest to the right. Now I had terrible eyesight for distance at this age and couldn't make anything out. I picked up the pebble, I threw it toward the creek trying to signal I wasn't scared. The pebbles, the pebbles wasn't thrown trying to hurt me, more like messing with a front type toss. I told myself it was an acorn, hit that pebble, and that is why I saw it bounce. Finally, I finally became overwhelmed with uncomfortableness and headed back. I wanted to run, but I've always been a fast twitch kid, fast twitch quick kid, instead of slow twitch long distance kid, and I didn't want to be winded if something went down. But trust me, everything in me was telling me to run. The whole way back I was being paced. It started sounding like 30 yards away, and soon sounded 10 yards away. I would stop, and it would stop. I was tripping. I never saw anything thinking it was my steps echoing off the trees, but it wasn't. I finally neared the fence and sprinted the last 40 yards, never told a soul, and carried the shame of being such a pussy all these years until I heard several shares eerily similar, with dogs acting weird, pebbles being thrown, and the pacing while walking. You made me a believer in something out there. Thanks, Steve, and keep sharing. All right. 
Uh, you know what I'm going to say. Just the fact that you are writing in to me to share here. You know what it was. You already know what it was. And uh, believe her. You know, I always, sometimes I don't struggle. I mean, it's, it's not a big issue to me when people say, I'm a believer. But I think that saying I'm a believer is possibly not the best choice when it comes to this topic. I don't use that myself. I am, I accept the facts of the truth is my stance on, on that point. I accept what is true. I accept um, the proof that my neighbor, fellow men, fellow women have given me tens of thousands of them. I accept the facts. I accept the facts as truth and that is why we are here digging for the answers to uh, find out what the hell, who, why, and how come when it comes to these honest facts being shared. So um, I like to say I am a knower of a lot of the truths out there and I am a seeker of many other truths that I have yet to figure out. <laughs> right? But anyway, uh, thanks for sending that in. Absolutely appreciate it. And uh, many people still laugh at, at, at things they don't understand today. And so unfortunately, it's, unfortunately, it's a human trait. A common human trait is to laugh. Laugh. It's, a, it's a, an initial reaction. It's just a reaction. Laughing. Because none of this is funny. There's abs, I've mentioned it before, there is absolutely nothing funny about a Sasquatch experience being shared. The word Sasquatch isn't funny, otherwise comedians would be using it all the time if it was funny, right? Laughing is a human characteristic, it's a reaction. Human reaction, whatever you want to call it. People laugh at what scares them, people laugh at what they don't understand, and people laugh off topics they don't want to pursue. It's a quick, easy way of shutting it down, right? I'm really babbling today. Blood's been pumping. I've done a lot today in the last two days and I've drank a bunch of coffee and I, uh, I'm looking forward to getting out of here and hitting the ocean again. I'm going solo again. And I'm gonna take that Zodiac to some other places shortly. But getting back to this previous emailer, I hope you sharing what you just shared with everybody through me helps. And I hope as well that if you come across um, any knowledge that somebody here might benefit from, you get it into us, all right? Now, man, I hope this, this video isn't all over the map. It feels like it is to me at this point, but whatever. It is what it is. Let's read this one. This shouldn't be too long. It just looks like a few emails in this. I don't know why. This is titled, First Time. My name is Rusty, and you can share my name. I think we've heard from you before. As a kid, we moved a lot, but for a portion, we lived in Payson, Arizona, on the backside of the Indian Reservation and the woods between Payson and Star Valley. Our neighbor, excuse me, cut trees. I've been riding three wheelers and quads since I was five, raised by my mom and quite a few men, some better than others, from farms to the mountains to the hood. Just giving you some background. One day, home alone, I took off on my quad down through the trails to Star Valley. I went down the wash because it was a shortcut to another trail. Halfway down, I came up to this platform shelf next to a tree. I pulled up next to it. I took my backpack off to grab my drink, and as I took a drink, scanning around heavy brush and woods, as I took another drink, I heard the craziest roar. Deep. Went right through me. I looked around and nothing. At this moment, I felt I should get going. I put my drink back in my backpack, took off. On the way back on the trail riding along, looked sideways into the woods and there it was. I did a double take and never talked about it till now. It was matching my speed in flashes to sneak. I haven't rode alone since. It's been a problem in parts of the woods, not all places, but there are places I don't feel safe. I feel like I'm being watched or hunted. All right, second email attached in this whole folder. Same person. This one's titled, To Steve. I see shadows all the time. In a few places I can feel slash know they are there. These beings are not to be taken lightly. I've asked, please do not frighten my family. And I know you're there and I promise to teach my children to respect you. And shit usually calms for a bit. But I've now put cams up 
everywhere, every which directions outside. Every now and then we will get an enormous boom and I'll find a rock in by the house. I've heard them yell and I've had the dead silence and mind talk, seen them follow me and seen the killing field with deer hanging 11 to 16 feet in trees. I've seen structures and broken trees, smelled the sulfur swamp smells, and I'm having a hard time being taken for real. I've sat, watched your videos with the kids, told them my experiences. I've said things to people and I've been treated like a nut job, but I know what I've seen. Nothing has struck fear in me like this, and I've been, and I've been in some shit. I still have dreams and times where it's like real, then I wake up like I am exhausted, never slept at all. All started as a child from one times one Maplewood to three plus times Sturgeon Lake area to one time Payson and one time Superstition Mountains in Arizona to two times North Dakota, every time at Joy Cook State Park, Minnesota and all over Wyoming. All right, you get some stuff off your chest here, aren't you? Here's the third email, same man. My second experience at Aunt Bev's. First off, I want to say thank you. I'm not sure how to start this, and I'm not a writer. I mill ink and build cars, and enjoy fishing in the woods. I was 11 years old and went to my Aunt Bev's house in Oliver, Wyoming. The ride up there was always a bit different as soon as we crossed that bridge. Her lot is heavily wooded and has a creek down the hill behind the backyard, which had a seven foot, cent, seven foot fence. My aunt had shepherds. We weren't allowed to play in the back 40. After watching and hearing a video of the truth, things started coming together. I remember my mom talking about my Aunt Bev and Uncle about the backyard and the dogs that came up missing. And my uncle said it's wolves. And my aunt said, the people of the woods got them. She said, watch and put apples on the fence on these spikes. The old folks sat there all day watching out the windows. Meanwhile, us kids, all my cousins and brothers, and a few others, a group of nine, we walked to the end of the driveway and down the road to the end where it dips down to the creek bottom. It was a super creepy and I was full of spit and vinegar. My cousins and brother dared me to go down there and me and a cousin did. By the time I got down there, you could barely see the top. It was always had that haze. And I got down first and I turned to face my cousin, terrified, and everything went silent. As my cousin took his last two steps to the bottom, he looked up behind me and ran back up crying. I ran 15 to 20 steps after him like what the F, then just started walking. As seven family members looked like deer caught in the headlights at us coming out of the haze. I remember we got to the top and we all ran back to the house. The haze in it was nothing out of the norm. As soon as we got under it to the bottom, it smelled like sulfur, a yellowstone. All I seen first glance was all the rocks and water and a ton of tree trunks going up the sides. I could hear the water and chatter from the peanut gallery and my cousin shuffling through the leaves grabbing the trees on the way down. Again, then it was terrifying and like I was forced to turn around as everything went dead silent, unexplainable silence. My cousin started crying and ran and it's as if I had to follow as I was being told don't go back and don't ever come back. I haven't, but every time we come or go, I look. I will end this on here. Oh yeah, later that day, night before sundown, my mom screaming, Bev, Bev, I seen it. Arm reached out of the woods and grabbed it. It grabbed the apples. We all sat and watched for the next two days, and I'll share other stories soon. All right, there you go, man. Rusty, it sounds like you got a shitload to get off your chest, man. And uh, feel free to do it, all right? It sounds like there's a whole pile of people here in this story who know what's going on, and they are very familiar with what's going on. And uh, I am 100% confident that many people here want to hear what you, what you know and what you've seen, all right? And if you've got anything that's going to help anybody, get it into me. Non-stop! Okay, I'm gonna go one more. I'll be uh, filming from the remote coast next time I manage to get a video out, which I don't know when it's gonna be, you guys, all right? I don't know when somebody finally seen an arm grabbing an apple. I thought they usually just disappeared from what many people have shared previously, right? 
Strange creature. Steve discovered your site about a month ago. Since then, I've been glued to it almost every waking moment. I'm in a wheelchair now, and I don't have much to do. I've pretty well given up on the things I used to do. Ah, sucks. Sorry to hear that. I love the outdoors, hunting and fishing, whenever I got the chance. I had to retire about 10 years ago due to severe pain in my spine and hips from injuries sustained when I was in the Army. It finally caught up to me. Anyway, several years ago, I was standing out in the back patio door smoking when I saw the strangest thing I've ever seen. Moving east to west was some kind of creature covered with long brown hair. It really had no shape I can describe except long and hairy. I estimate it was 10 to 12 feet long and 3 to 4 feet high. I couldn't make out any head or legs. It moved as though it was floating. No up and down motion as something walking. I thought about it a lot. I only told two people, my best friend over 50 years, and a guy that grew up around here that also loves the, loves the outdoors. He didn't look at me like I was nuts, even though it sounds crazy as hell to me. He, was, he asked me a couple of times if I ever saw it again. I've asked him more than once if he ever saw or heard anything like this, and he just says no. He doesn't elaborate about any of it. I just get the feeling he might know more than, about it than I do. I guess I should say I live in West Central Ohio, Gill figure, near the Indiana state line. This is mostly farmland about 35 miles northwest of Dayton. My son and I used to deer hunt all over this area and never came in contact with anything weird. I know how this sounds, but I was stone cold sober. With your fan base, I hope someone out there can shed some light on this because I've lost sleep thinking about it. I haven't thought about it for a while until I saw your channel. I've never written in anywhere for much of anything. Sorry for being so long-winded, but I don't know how to make it any shorter. Thank you for all you do. Scott Wages, Greenville, Ohio. Scott, it's not long-winded, man. And uh, all the thanks go to you for taking your time out to send this in to us. And, and here's what I know. Well, here's what I've heard through numerous, numerous people. Uh, these beings, some of them, I don't know which ones, have been noted to go f nearly flat on the ground, arms and legs stretched out this way, kind of like those people who roller skate, flat as a pancake and go underneath the bar each time they lower it, some something like that, right? And they have been seen traveling remarkably fast in that position, moving like no human can move, moving like no animal has been really noted to move. And that sounds like eerily similar to a lot of those gross um, thriller movies that have been made. You know, when they show somebody, some demon, some possessed being where it runs up a wall all splayed out and with their, excuse me, joints going the wrong way. I think that's probably why it scares the absolute shit out of people so badly when they see something doing that for real and something huge and something covered in hair. I think one time we heard of that of one of these things moving that way, but their head was like straight forward. I remember the face is facing straight forward, meanwhile the thing is off the ground, and all the limbs are out to the side and, and moving uh, what would normally be noted as an impossible movement for us or anything else. So I have a funny suspicion that that's what you witnessed. I think that's, there's a good chance that that is exactly what you saw from your description, right? And that's creepy as all hell. Hmm. Yeah, anyway, um, I gotta get rocking this day out with the rest of it. I got a lot to do if I'm going to make it back by this evening, which is a couple hour drive, but I got a lot to do before I head out that way. And um, I was hoping I was gonna get a video made today for the other channel dedicated to bears and bear hunting and what I videotaped this past handful of days. And I think I will try to do that. It might not be that long, but... Um, in the meantime, there's a man up there whose friends and colleagues refer to as the prof. And you know, we, you emailed me not too long ago. And uh, just a heads up to you, I'll be looking forward to getting a hold of you soon to talk about what was uh, possibly going to be shared. And um, what else? Who else can I speak out loud to right now? That's that's one of my uh, that what I just mentioned is high on my list of to dos. Uh, yeah, I got too much in my brain right now 
to uh, sound too smooth for this camera. Obviously, nothing scripted. I don't pre-plan anything. I don't write anything down. It just comes out of my mouth as my brain comes up with it. So, share my story at howtohunt.com. All right, share my story at howtohunt.com. That's where you get it in. Get in the information, and uh, I'll leave on this note. And I'm gonna try to leave on this note more often than not. Be sure to be honest with your friends, your friends, your family, your coworkers, your children, and share the truth with them. All right? Help put an end to this bullshit ride that too many of us are on right now. There is such a ride of absolute bullshit going on, and it needs to be stopped. All right? It needs to be stopped. The only way it's going to stop is if you all speak honestly and put an end to the bullshit. It's very very important. It's probably, if not, it's, very, it's possibly going to be vital for the existence of human beings is to put an end to this bullshit run that we are being forced to ride along with currently. All right, when it comes to this truth and so many more, it's such a ride of bullshit going on and it needs to seriously come to an end. Please, please, please be honest with your family first, whoever you can outside of that. And don't stop being honest, all right? Share the honest truth. And if the honest truth is confusing and, and you don't quite know enough details about it, well, share with people that you know what you know and you're trying to find out more. And that's why we need to talk about it, all right? There you go. I hope, there was, uh, I hope this video was a lot more sharing than me babbling, but I got a funny feeling my babbling was a little dominant here today. Oops. Okay, here we go. I'm back.